You've returned, and with ale this time. A wise choice for this dark story. The shadows will seem longer when it's done. Before we talk to Vanu and Tathamet, the high heavens and the burning hells, and all who reside there, embroiled in the eternal conflict. Now let us speak of the creation of Sanctuary, and our creators, Inarius and Lilith. Angel and demon, our father and mother. The eternal conflict raged on, endless and all-consuming. Led by the Angiris Council, the angelic forces fought countless battles against the armies of the seven demon lords who sought to conquer all of creation. Though the high heavens often defeated their adversaries, they also failed to destroy them allowing evil to return again and again and again, ceaseless, unrelenting. Both sides claimed victories, both suffered crippling defeats. The conflict was a never-ending slaughter. Many of these battles were fought in Pandemonium, the plain said to be formed from the violent death of Anu and Tathamed, where the heart of creation lay the mountain-sized artifact that would come to be known as the World Stone, housed within the Pandemonium Fortress. Any who control the World Stone would have the power to create new worlds or unmake them with a thought. A desirable and dangerous prize indeed, it became the focus of the eternal conflict. Over the eons, the Pandemonium Fortress changed hands many times and became a strange place embodying the warped reality of Pandemonium as a whole, a structural and liminal place, affected by the high heavens and burning hells alike. Angels and demons too numerous to count have fallen at its gates, over and over and over again. This endless cycle caused Inarius, advisor to the Angiris Council and under Tyriel's command, to eventually conclude that the war could never be won, and he resolved to abandon it. Elsewhere, Lilith, daughter of hatred, was arriving at a similar conclusion. On her father Mephisto's role in the eternal conflict, Lilith once wrote, My father is content to fight the same battles and the same foes while everything turns to ashes. The war will never be won so long as he and his brothers lead. There is an end to it, but fools like my father are too blind to see it. Inaris and Lilith, angel and demon. Separated by a vastness in distance and experience that is difficult to comprehend, they came to the same conclusion. They must escape the eternal conflict. I wonder if the cosmos had ever contemplated such an unholy alliance and divine union. I wonder if creation shuddered in horror and awe, as Inarius and Lilith gathered others to their cause, fellow renegades seeking escape from the ceaseless fighting. The details of their meeting, like so much of our history, is obscured by the relentless passage of time and myth. But the great Herodric scholar Deckard Cain tells us of Inarius, wounded or marooned in the Pandemonium Fortress, meeting with Lilith. Lilith was not spared the hatred of her father Mephisto, and from time immemorial had awaited an opportunity to rebel. For the first time, combatants in the eternal conflict not only set aside their differences, but also formed a union. It's difficult to imagine, but legends tell us that Inarius and Lilith forged an alliance that would alter the course of the war, reality itself, and all of existence. Inarius and Lilith pledged themselves to their joint cause of escaping the eternal conflict. United in purpose, both resourceful and wise in their way, they managed to gain control of the World Stone and hide it from the watchful eyes of the heavens and the hells. Working together, they shifted the World Stone into a pocket dimension, hiding it from the opposing powers of the eternal conflict. There. They used its extraordinary power to shape a new world, a refuge free from war. 
free from unending strife. A sanctuary. The renegade angels and demons came together to create new life, and the nature of the eternal conflict changed. The joining of the opposing natures within these firstborn made beings unlike any before. Beautiful abominations called Nephilim, from which humanity would one day descend as inheritors of both lineages. The birthrights of the firstborn graced them with the potential to resist the evil of the burning hells and to defy the dominion of the high heavens. Because of this, many of the angels and demons who rebelled with Lilith and Inarius feared what these children might become. The burden of children can strain even the strongest of allies, and it seems that angels and demons are not immune to this simple truth. Surely, Inarius and Lilith could not have foreseen the cosmic consequences of their actions. Inarius was alarmed when he realized that his children might surpass both angels and demons in potential. The other angels and demons fought fiercely over what should be done, whether to spare the Nephilim or exterminate them. The descent between the two groups alarmed Inarius, who called for a period of reflection. Lilith. Driven into a mad frenzy by the threat of her children's extinction, ruthlessly murdered each and every renegade angel and demon, leaving only Inarius to discover the carnage she had wrought. Horrified by the loss of his comrades at Lilith's hand, Inarius became enraged, but still he could not kill Lilith. Instead, he banished her from the sanctuary they had created together. Inarius then attuned the World Stone to diminish the powers of the Nephilim over time, and disappeared in the aftermath. As their strengths faded generation by generation, they came to resemble mortals, no longer angelic or demonic, simply human. As their power diminished, so too did their collective memory, until only legends of what came before remained. It is said that the firstborn remained immortal and undying as humankind took shape, giving rise to the cultures, kingdoms and tribes of sanctuary, before themselves fading into myth. Now you know, the birth of our world and our inheritance, demonic and divine, the eternal conflict that rages ceaselessly in each of us. Think on that, young scholar, until we meet again. None of us is above sin or immune to evil seduction. Even the most righteous may fall, given the right push in the wrong direction.